No. Sure, but if you, you've got it on, then that's it's recording. recording. It's yeah. recording. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So that was totally fun. <laughs> yeah, that was okay. So, guys, resilience is key, right? We just, we only popped on here three or four times before we could all it out, but we are here despite having to do it three to four times, so. <laughs> Which is hilarious, might I add. But it also proves that, like, showing up, like, you just got to keep pushing, and it will work. Oh, my gosh. Dude, I see the little thing now, and well, it's all dude, it like the recording thing. Hmm? What did you say? It just feels so good to finally be on here and actually do, see the little recording thing. I do see it now. I'm sorry. I was talking over you. Yes. I agree. And I like full screen this. So like this is my screen here. Um, let me know if you can hear my blinds like banging in the background. Because if you do, I will lift them up because I have my windows open. So you don't? That's good. Dude, this is okay. 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 Yeah, this has to be like a new thing now. <laughs> a happy dance. I'm taking it. <laughs> yep. Okay, so we're going to get to it, but this is, we're going to welcome everybody to this um, webinar, to this Zoom call. Um, Stassi and I have been working our butts off and to create some incredible content for um, all the moms that will be watching this now and in the future. So we just want to thank you for being here. And if, however you found this, however you catch this, um, we're just grateful that you are here. So because this content is for you. So Stasia, would you like to introduce yourself? And then I can introduce mine and then we can just like dig right in. Absolutely. So I'm Stasia. I am the MLM mom. I am a business and life coach for multi-level marketing moms specifically. I believe that you can have your cake and eat it too, meaning I believe that you can have a business that feels authentic and feels good to you and keep your thriving family life. And this is my bestie. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my name is Kara Ray. And I am a mindset coach for mothers specifically who want to strip mom guilt and own ambition in business and family life. So I also, which we've talked about already, but I founded um, Ambitious Moms Balancing Business and Babies. And you can find that on Facebook. And it's just a safe community for moms to come together and join for growth connections. Um, there's coaching opportunities. There's tons of stuff there. We offer freebies. But this is also something that was curated from that, from the connections that I made through our business coach and then now through both of our communities. So that's who I am. And so I guess if we're just going to dig right in, like, staff are you okay if we just like go right through the, like start with the pillars? I'm like, cause I guess we could give like a little bit of a, a background between the two of us and like how we started so people know. <laughs> yeah. So I think I'm just going to tell you guys the story about how I met Kara, right? Because this is amazing. This is the coolest thing. So I started working with my coach and I re-niched 50 times, right? And then I finally relaunched my brand. And when I launched my community, she was one of the beautiful souls that came, came into this space with me, right? And um, I really, really loved her and I loved her energy and she relaunched her brand and it was amazing and incredible, you know, the ambitious mom. And I was in the group, and I was like, ah, oh, this is amazing. And I had my launch party, and she won one of my prizes at my giveaway. And at first, I was so scared to ner – like, I was so nervous. I was so scared to nervous you. Listen to how scared I am to, like, talk about it. <laughs> I didn't even want to message you and tell you you because I was like, oh, this is another coach. It's like, blah, blah, blah. She's not going to – whatever. And it's just, like, magic, and it's magical, and it makes me feel so passionately about, like, talking to the right people in your messaging. So even if you don't attract like your soulmate client, you're still, you're always attracting like your soulmates and you're not getting these icky, hey girl messages all the time. You're just always getting what you want, who you are. Yes. Um, I thought I might mention you do keep cutting in and out. Darn it. You do too. Should we? It's so funny because like, I don't know why it's doing that. 
However, we're going to keep going and we'll like talk because it, it catches up with you. And if it's, if it's doing the same for me, we can always re-record this. So there is like, this is just honestly another test. Like both Stasi and I believe in the universe, and, like prior to us coming on here, um, we had too much energy to even be on here. Like it would not let us. And then I made the silly blonde mistake of um, thinking that like she was muted when actually I had muted her by, you know, just silly things like that. Um, but we're here, we're live, we're going to do it. And if Stasia have not, if we have to um, load it on a different pro, like on a different platform, that's cool. It's just, it's just testing us to see if this. Absolutely, dude, you are lagging a little bit too, though, just so you know. So maybe we just need to slow down when we speak. Does this help? It does a little bit, but you do still keep freezing. This is strange. I wonder if it's the weather is really kind of bad over here. Is it bad over there? Um, it's not the best here. Like, it's definitely really windy here. So. Darn nature messing with my zooms. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, we picked, like, the fall equinox to come on here and talk about this. Like, the strongest energy shifts ever. By the way. Oh, man. Ooh, is that what that is? Let's make some shit. Yeah. Well, you should have seen the moon last night. Like, I'm not kidding. It was... It was so distracting when we were driving, but you know, we're getting off. Crap, that's a moon. <laughs> that's a moon. I know, right? Right. Okay. Okay. So we're digging in. Would you like to take it first? Well, we can just go right into the pillars. Sure. Yeah, I can talk about it first because I can. We can go through the pillars as we set them up, um, and then. Because I'll talk about mine and we'll just continue on. And then after we can look at this recording later and just, we'll just drive out the way it is. And you can always like raise your hand if I'm like freezing too bad and nobody can understand. Um, but so Stasia and I created, it's it, the, like what the webinar that we're talking to you about is attracting your soulmate clients. And this has to do with the four founding pillars, like so the four founding pillars that Stasia and I believe have um, helped us balance our business and babies but also up leveled our mind and our life. So, and like we believe in them and these are, these are practices that we, we follow daily. And so the biggest one that I am so passionate about talking about has to do with self care and you know, whoever's watching it or listening to this may be like, really, is that that important? Well, I'm going to tell you that if you're not making yourself a priority, how are you going to be making your clients a priority? I'm just going to call it. It's a, Spade, I'm going to call a spade a spade because, you know, I remember when my coach asked me, like, who is your ideal client? I'm like, oh, well, like anyone. Well, really, no, it's not anyone. I'm here talking to mothers. And so, <laughs> so as you'll talk more about, like, narrowing that down. But I found that I was putting myself aside so much and that I was struggling with burnout. I was feeling really overwhelmed all the time because I wasn't using like a calendar. I wasn't allowing myself to have time to take care of me. And we're both moms. So we also had this thought process of our children had to come first. And then one day I was watching this. Um, it was not a webinar, but it, I was, it was a video that I was watching. And it all had to do surround with your children and your, your relationship, whether that's a husband or like a boyfriend or whatever that is to you and how it had to go you, then it had to go your spouse or your relationship. And then it was your children because eventually your children leave the nest, your husband doesn't, and you don't. And so when you wake up one day and you have nothing, not, not have nothing, but there's nobody here for you to take care of and you haven't put yourself first or gone out and gone on dates or gone for, gone out for dinner or gone out with your girlfriends or had a nice relaxing bath, you get so confused and caught up about, well, how the hell do I do that? And even myself, like I'm, I'm 26 and I was struggling with putting myself first. I have two beautiful stepchildren and I have a beautiful one-year-old daughter and I was putting themselves first all the time, which in turn, I was not taking care of me. I kept saying no to friends. I kept saying no about going on dates. Like who wants to say no to their like husband or whoever they're in a relationship with and want to say no to going on a date? Like no. Um, and I always felt like my kids had to come first. And so then I also did a lot more research in regards to the way that children perceive love, how children give out their energy and where they take their energy. 
And from that, I found out that children actually have to take from you. So the best way for you to show up for them is actually showing up for you so that you don't feel depleted, so that you don't feel restless and anxious and um, so that you mm -hmm. have a sense of control. Like we all love to feel a little bit of control. And so there is points in your life that you can really control. And what you can control is how, to, how you take care of yourself, um, whether that's going to a gym, whether that's just eating different foods to help, whether that's, you know, going out with your girlfriends, going on a date with your husband. Um, and then for you, like whether you do face masks or have a relaxing bath or watch your favorite show. Um, I love to listen to podcasts. I love self-development because that's what I take my time. Um, that's what I put my, I guess, like self-care time in for myself every day is through either journaling, listening to a podcast. I love going outside and going in nature. There's also just something about, like, even if you just turn your phone off, like, onto, like, silent mode where you can't receive anything and you're just listening to something and really looking outside, um, there's something beautiful about it because, you know, I'm actually, there's something I want to try here. So I want everyone to look around and pick out something blue. Now I want you to look around your room and count everything that's blue. And how many things do you see that's blue? I'll let you answer that, Stasia. Hang on. I've got a lot. Twenty-one. Okay, now can you tell me how many things were yellow? No. What was it looking for yellow? <laughs> yes, because you weren't. But that's the thing. Is we don't put our focus on something, we don't look for it, and we don't take care of it. And I love that exercise because it really does – Everybody who does it, like even when I did it the first time, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to look for everything in these colors. And then when they ask me this question, I'm like, oh, well now I'm stumped. Now I don't know what I'm doing. So that's all in relation to taking care of yourself. And so I, like I had created this challenge before where I challenged people to put 30 minutes of like either self-development, self-care into their daily routine. Because if you want, if you want other people to show up for you, what are you expecting them to do? Because you have to embody that. Like if you want the women that you're speaking with, the mothers that you're speaking with to take care of themselves, then you damn well better be taking care of yourself too, because you're trying to teach that and embody that to somebody else. And so I firmly believe with every ounce in my being <laughs> that putting self-care has to be at the top of your list. It needs to be something that you value. It needs to be something that you care about and you need to care about yourself. Like, at the end of the day, your heart is inside you. It's not inside of anybody else. You cannot expect anybody else to take care of you. You have to take care of you. Um, it's just like, you know, right now we're taking care of our kids because we're teaching them to grow up to adults that we want to hang out with. I've had these conversations with them where I'm not here to be your best friend. I'm here to be a parent and I'm here to love the heck out of you, but I'm also here to teach you how to be a nice person. And a person that I want to hang out with when I'm older, <laughs> because if we're being really honest here, like we don't, we don't like hanging out with people that don't have high vibes, which Sassy will also talk about too. And you'll see how all of these things intertwine with each other. And like, if you want to show up 111%, like if you are just starting to, to implement self-care in your, in your life, I'm going to be real with you. Like you are not going to feel hundred percent balanced just like this. It is going to take time. It is going to be a process and you have to give yourself that process. You have to give yourself permission to just be, to just love yourself and to do things that um, will launch you forward. Like that's why I journal and I journal in regards to like manifestation in regards to money, um, the things that I desire instead of wants and needs, which there's a couple coaches that talk about those things too. And that really resonated with me because the words that you speak to yourself, really come to play in life and so you know that's in like another thing like do you you desire to take care of yourself like do you desire to live a long life do you desire to be happy um do you desire to teach other women or other mothers to um, embody self-care and put themselves first so that they can show up and they can show up at a high energy for their children for their husband and then still not feel depleted because that's how i want to show up i don't want to show up burnt out and Another big thing that I learned was that, you know, implementing self-care, I'm the boss of myself. Like, I get to decide what the heck I want to do. Nobody else decides that for me. Nobody else, which we'll also go into later in this too. 
<laughs> Everything just ties. Um, and I wrote notes because notes are the best thing to remind you of the things that you want to talk about. And so, um, you know, this is another thing. We put work into the things that we desire. So say you desire to go to school because you want to become a nurse or you desire to start um, a coaching business because you want to help mothers or help women, whatever that is that you decide to do. Um, if you are going to put work into that, shouldn't you be putting work into yourself? Really? Like if you're going to launch something and you're going to do something, it needs to be from a space of love and you need to know how to love yourself to really like put that love out there before, because you don't want to feel depleted. If you're constantly giving, giving, giving and not receiving yourself, you're depleted. So, and then like, I also wrote down here that you need to take effing initiative. <laughs> and loving yourself because that's a quote from Stasia where she was like, take F an initiative. And <laughs> it is, it's from you. We were just talking about that. And I'm like, that is so good. But take initiative in your life. You know, like the little things might not seem like a lot, but once they become like daily habits, um, they mean a lot to you. Like I know that every day that I need to either talk with Stasia because it is also something that I do for self-care or I journal in my book because I need to, because it makes me feel better. It just puts me in a bigger, in a better mood, especially when I write about gratitude, like the things that I am extremely grateful for, which these are all things of self-care you guys. And so I also talked about this before and Stasia knows this. I call self-care. It is a black and white topic it is not eh, eh i might do it eh, no no you either are going to do it or you're not going to do it and you can choose which one you're going to do and you can choose how you're going to show up and the way that i put it is when you do start putting self-care on the table and it, that it, it is like a no holds bar like this is what i'm doing you have a projection of endless possibilities and you cut it off you have none you block yourself off and realizing that a lot of the power that you have is inside of you. And like we will talk about deeper in regards to how this is going, going to help with attracting your soulmate clients. But if you desire your client to be happy, to love themselves in the skin that they're in, well, then you need to embody that as well because I believe in loving myself exactly who I am now. I'm not here to impress everybody. I'm not here to be everybody's friend. I, w I love people. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I love people. But I am not here to, to please everybody with the words that I have to say. And me taking care of myself and putting myself ahead of a lot of other people does not please them. And so there will be people in your life that won't get it because they don't do that. And like, if you're not ready to process that and let that go then you'll have to evaluate that too. There's a lot of questions that will probably come up here for you, but what the biggest question I have for people to walk away from this is what is going to happen to you and your life if you don't take care of yourself? What's going to happen? Um, I want you to write out a list of how kick ass your life will be when you do put that in. And then I want you to write a list of if you don't, you don't do that for yourself if you don't prioritize yourself, because we make priority, pri we prioritize the things that we want. And I know that my self care has launched myself. And I'll give you guys a story before stuff moves on into her topic. But when I decided that I was going to make a big shift and I was feeling that something needed to change and that there was a different calling and I was called to coach women and specifically mothers because I had gone through postpartum depression and I had all these different things weighing on me that I was like, I'm done feeling this way. And I made the decision and I chose to, um, I had been, you know, following my, my, my coach currently for a while. And my mom used to be a, um, a business and life coach. And I'm like, I need this in my life. I, I need it. Like I, 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 I want it. And I kept thinking about it and it kept popping up and popping up and popping up. And that's the power of manifestation to people. It happens. And I decided to say yes to myself. And that was the biggest thing. And that was the, the biggest thing that I could have ever done for myself. Um, it, I went from being like somebody who was depressed into somebody who knew that there was endless possibilities. I went from someone who didn't love the skin that she was in, loving every inch of herself, no matter what. And to now I look in the mirror and I don't see all those things like that shit is possible. When you don't look at yourself in the mirror, you don't hate what you see. You love everything that you see right where you are. And I never thought that was possible. I, I literally, this, it happened again this week where I was like, wow, 
like I am embodying this shit. I look good. I'm so confident. <laughs> like I'm not cocky by any means, but I sure as shit love myself. And mm-hmm. that took time from reading self development each day. That took me. I I decided I wanted to learn how to do yoga, and I want. And a friend of mine reached out and like meditation. And so I read up on all these things, and I decided to journal and do gratitude and really change mm-hmm. my focus into something positive instead of something negative. And self care is extremely positive and can really shift your mind. Mindset. And that's what I'm about is shifting your mindset from an area that was just not what you wanted and you want to push that the heck away to gaining something that you love. And I am a firm believer that that starts with self care and that starts with loving who the hell you are and embodying the woman that you are now, not 20 pounds later, not 10 kids later, not when you get this perfect body, not when you can fit in this dress now, now, because if you can love yourself at extreme levels now, imagine how much you're going to love yourself later. Like once you start pushing yourself through everything that you're doing, like just freaking imagine it. I just, it blows my mind. So that is my topic of self care. And I could just like drive out with this for hours because I'm a firm believer in it and I embody it every day. And it is okay. Like if something doesn't feel normal, like, so say you start journaling and all of a sudden, one day, you're like, I just it feels icky. like I don't want to do it anymore. Don't do it. <laughs> like, this is the simplest part of self-care. You have a choice. You have a choice of doing what makes you happy. So if that means going for a walk every day and that feels you that up, do it. If that means writing in a journal, do it. Do whatever makes you feel good. Because there was a point in my life where I started journaling and I was letting everything out. And I let everything out where I was like, now what? And so I took like a week break of journaling because I was like, I don't, I don't know what to say. Like, I don't know what to say. And it just didn't feel right. But then I got back into it when in a space of when it felt right, but I was still embodying everything else that I wanted to. So it is possible that because we embody the same thing of like putting yourself first will launch your business and will launch the comfort zone that you're in because before I would not have come on here in the confidence that I have now. Like I would not have like reached out to other people or said yes right away to like collaborating with people or trying to figure all this stuff out. Like prior when Zoom decided to have a meltdown here earlier, I would have, I would probably cried (laughs) because it would be so mad because I didn't have control. Now, yeah, it was a little frustrating, but I knew that it would work and I knew that we could show up when I wanted to, but it starts with self-care and it starts with like loving and learning to let things go and that's a whole other topic but i'm now gonna let stasia take take it because i will just keep going (laughs) dude i love it though i love it i love it i love it like this self like it is like the foundational pillar though like well i know pillars go this way but like let self-care be the foundation (laughs) that's way. (laughs) who gives a shit you know you it's a foundational pillar you knew yes. you were here for four of them. Let it be one. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Yep. I actually have a story really fast. It's a little off topic, but it's okay. So That's okay. We were, at, we were at the movie theater one time when I was a kid, and my dad took a big swig of his drink, and it was a really, really funny part. And he, like, all over the people in front of us. And I just, like, I don't know. To this day, I'm still, like, Wow. <laughs> wow. Like, what would I have done? I wonder if I would have turned around and laughed. Like, I, th- I think I would have if somebody spit their drink on me. Like, it's as gross as it is. It is. That's funny. Objectively, when sp- somebody spits their drink out, it's really very funny. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. You yes. could ask, actually, like, one day, this is off topic, too. Ask Autumn about when I spit my coffee out. I will. That's on video. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. All right, guys. So we're going to dig into going live now, right? Now that Kara and I have shared with you spitting out drink stories. We're all moms here, so if you're grossed out, you're... you're I mean, we're moms. How are you grossed out? No, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> like it's okay to be grossed out but like we deal with poop and pee and explosions a lot and puke so like spitting out coffee is the least of my worry <laughs> well, that's what i'm saying like my baby son if if i don't bathe that kid daily he smells like it's either 
pea or maple syrup. Like, I don't know. <laughs> so, I feel you. They're icky. All right. I want to talk about utilizing social media, right? And being able to show up like this, like Kara did. Like, she showed up authentically in her space. She talked about what felt good to her. You could tell it lit her up. Um, do the raise the hand thing if I start, like, cracking up again. Yeah. But, you can, like, all right, cool. but you can, like, you can just tell. And the more that, you know, you show up in this space, like, this space that came from your self-care routine because they're foundational and they build. Maybe we should have picked something other than the four founding pillars because they almost build on themselves. It's more like a, like a pyramid. That's okay because they still, even if they build on themselves, it's still, they all come together. And no matter which way you put those pillars, they still, like, whether that the first foundational pillar for you is, like, showing up on a platform or it's self-care, no matter what, there's still pillars, which I did the same thing, but <laughs> there's still pillars. You can put them in whichever way you want to put them. And that's the, the freedom that you have when you, like, have a network marketing business or an online or a business of your own. Um, this is the freedom that you have. It's the freedom of choice on where you want to place those things. So keep going. A thousand percent, dude. You're so right. Too literal sometimes. Me, not you. So to grow like no interest, right? You have to be able to shut up, show up, show up as the weirdo you are with the wrong pillars or the right pillars and the wrong words and the wool sounds and all the things, right? And this ultimately attracts your soulmate clients. And you're probably like, uh, well, how? Because when you show up on your live video, you get to pick your verbiage and you get to pick who you're talking to. So you get to pick who your clients are when you show up from this space, right? When you show up from the space where you've done your routine and you feel good and you feel like you, I think that's the biggest thing about self-care is it makes you feel like you, right? Yes, right? 100%. 100%. So then you get to show up in this space of authenticity and you start building and building and building, right? So it's not just enough though to like show up and be authentic. You also have to be consistent. You have to be consistent and you can't just like once a week consistent, right? Because then you'll get lost in everybody's newsfeed. You need to pick something that's feasible for you and stick to it. It doesn't have to be seven days a week. It doesn't have to be, I would just say three or more, right? I don't actually have like a study, but like to stay visible, you know what I mean? You just have to stay out of your comfort zone really is the thing. If three days a week makes you want to shit your pants and you should do three days a week, if seven days a week makes you want to shit your pants, you should do seven days a week. And that's how you decide. Right? So hundred yep, percent. Yeah. Like I will agree with you on all these fronts, especially because like we, like we created this together. So these are like foundational pieces that we agree upon. And like, like Stacia said, showing up who you are like messy hair like waking up with your kids like if you're attracting moms and you want them to show up who they like exactly who they are you also have to embody that yourself and it gives them permission like you give them almost permission freely to do that so yeah absolutely who you are as like a mom and like a coach is how you teach like your kids and your clients to show up in this world like you get to choose it's a daily thing every day you get to choose who you want to show yourself you are but also who you show others that like they get to be right so when you show up live you get to show up and you get to show up in your energy and this is what brings like like the people to you that are just like oh take my card and take my money let's let's do this because you've shown up in your authenticity and you've done it enough that people are like, oh, I know your energy and, you know, so your product, right, because it's all intertwined in your business, are going to get me what I want. And you move forward through there. Now, the one, this, this is like a key piece I was missing for a long time. I would go live and I would just kind of go live. You also have to add value, guys. You have to bring your niche, you have to bring this ideal client in your head, what she needs to know. You can't just show up and show her what you have now. You have to tell her how to get there. So 
you have to realize all of the things on your lives. You have to show up. You have to be consistent. You have to act like you. And you have to bring her what she needs to know. And if you're not sure what she needs to know, you've got to go back and you've got to re-niche down. Just, it's just, you've got to get in her head. Like, why is she laying in bed crying at night? What does she need to change, right? And then pop on and talk to her, just like you would talk to your best friend and tell her exactly why you understand, you know, how she feels and her problems and how she can fix them. It's not necessarily about like selling your product as much as it is like empowering somebody to use it. Right. Like I feel all like I'm going to talk for three days if I keep going. That's it. Well, I talked forever, man. <laughs> no, no, I'm just like, I, I just, agree with you though. Like when you, when you, when you talk about like, like, know and trust, and you're building, like, say, for example, a spe- specifically, like, a network marketing company, but also even, like, a coaching business, um, you need to show up, and if you know that, like, for myself, I know that my clients are mothers, and I know that, like, I reach out, and I ask the mothers, like, that's something you can do, too, like, you can, you can ask what they need in this season, because we all go through different seasons, and I never fully understood what a season meant until I realized I went through a season, and I went through, like, this, met, like, massive creative phase, where I was, like, popping stuff out like nothing, and, but there's people that are going to need your content right then, or your products, or whatever that you have on the table for them at certain times, and sometimes it won't be until later, and that's okay, because everybody goes through a different season, but, if you can provide and talk about, like, I go on and I talk about self-care. I talk about self-development. I talk about um, just showing up. I talk about tough conversations because that's a big one, too, and, like, honoring who you are. I talk about boundaries and values and, you know, all these different steps that can, like, excel your confidence. And so I know that the women that are in my community because they reached out to me um, or the clients – that they, that this is what they desire, that this is what they're craving in their life. And so I can create content for them. Like, this is why Stasi and I came together because we both have communities that are surrounded with network marketing women, women in business, um, women who have coaching businesses themselves and are also looking for um, more growth. Like that's a huge thing too, is that not everybody just wants your content too. They also want you. Like, remember, like this is a big thing for me. I... I love when someone gets to know me. I love when I get to know them when they, they post like some funny things, some, some like just stuff deep about themselves. Like when they open up and they become vulnerable, like that's a person I can relate to because I love being able to talk to people. And so, um, you know, when someone doesn't just like message me for a sale or someone doesn't just say like, here, I have something perfect for you, but they actually just talk to me. That's huge because people are going to swipe their card when they want to, when they like you. That's a huge thing. Like, people don't just swipe their card if they don't like you. They don't. Like, I don't. If someone just cold messages me, sorry, see you later. I, there's no connection. There's nothing there that makes me want to, to like, to do that. Where, like, I even, there's a woman that I know, and she's in network marketing, and she has such a booming business. And she, like, I was a part of this network marketing business a while back. And, like, but her passion that she has behind what she does, like, and her authenticity, and, like, she has niched down, and she's really figured out who her clients are. She knows that they love to hear jokes, that they love to hear about her family, that she, they love to see, like, product reviews, that they love to see not just, like, being tossed at, like, here's a product, I take my, like, this is what it costs, but actually her life and her, because people love her, and they buy from her. Like, she embodies it so well. I just... I give her, like, big kudos for this. Um, so, yeah, I love what you're saying in regards to, like, niching down and knowing who you're talking to and that people aren't just buying the product because they love it. Because, of course, people who buy the product or the content or the programs that you provide, they obviously are interested in them and like them. That's why they buy them. But they really like you. They really are buying from you. So. Yeah. Absolutely, dude. And that's why, like, this is one thing that I've found, like, was really really important is that like you attract like a former version of yourself essentially that's who that's who your clients are that's who your customers are so like it's really about almost like getting into your own head this is where like people start talking about it's about like doing the internal work it's about being self-aware and um what is it called like success aware 
was, what is, do you know what I'm trying to say? No, I don't, sorry. It's it's essentially like, you went from point A to point B, right? And sometimes somebody loses 40 pounds, but they don't really know how they did it, right? It's about moving from point A to point B and knowing exactly how you got there and being able to, right? This is where the disconnect comes from. A lot of the times when we show up and we want to like sell a product, but we don't really know what the product is doing for us other than like, oh yeah, I cleared up my face or like, yeah, it kind of helped me like lose weight. Like, well, how? Tell her how. Tell her you had to get up a little bit earlier to wash your face. You had to stay up a little bit later to exfoliate it. Like, tell her how. I had to put my daughter down, you know, a little sooner. So, you know, we ran extra after, I don't know, after dinner, we had an extra walk or something. Like, tell her how you got there. There wasn't just like one thing you did. You had a method. So it's about being able to like, this all ties into live because you have to know who you're talking about, I swear. But you have to, you have to be able to get in her head to know how you got from point A to point B, to remember what your point A was and how you felt there, and then help her move through it with you and your product. Like, and it gets to be that easy. You get to go, how did I do this? And then you teach it, and that's how you make your money. Like, that's it. Yes. And that's the power of social media. You show up, and you're consistent, and you're bringing value, and you have value to add because you are doing the thing if you don't know what you're doing, start journaling. This is what I did today. This is what really worked for me. This is what I'm selling. This is what feels good. And this is how, when you look back on your story, you're like, oh my God, I'm kicking ass. And not just like, I think I got some stuff done. I mean, my, my kids are clean. My kitchen's all right. You know, like you're, you're self-aware. You know what you're doing right. You know that you lost the weight because, you know, you ate a salad instead of, I really don't like that one, actually, because you chose vegetables instead of french fries. You know what I mean? With your meal. Like, there were small things you did. It wasn't just this one thing. People don't want the one product. They want to know how you did the thing. Right? Yeah. So that's pretty much all I've got on, on utilizing your social media for lives. Just know who you're talking to and talk to her. And if there's anybody else in your head... Remember, this is not about you and it's not about them. It's about this woman that you were, that you are so happy you're not anymore. And it's about helping her. Not yes. like for any other reason other than you know how it feels to be her and it just feels a little bit better now. Yep. And that's like figuring out who you're also, your ideal client is and that like, know, and trust, that takes time. Like, it really takes time, and like Stasia said, too, like, getting, having the ability to journal it out. You know, I didn't realize how powerful that was when I journaled the process. And I, because now when I create my program and I look back, I have a process to look back to, and I have teachings that I can, that I can actually teach and create into programs and just curate more content. And so it's... Yeah, you got a blueprint. Yeah, right? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah. And so, so, like, showing up with like self-care, um, that's just that's just a big one. But also that helps you with the like, don't trust of your on- audience because like if you don't push yourself like through your comfort zone, because I believe like like Stasia said in regards to like being com- comfortable, um, if you're comfortable, you're not pushing yourself hard enough. And comfortable, like people love to sit in comfortability because I sat in comfortability for a long time because when you move into like fear, there's a little bit of an unknown there, but like the fear is there for a reason because like I believe in the universe and like whether you believe in God, Buddha, whatever your religion may be or whatever you believe in, um, it's going to test you and it's really going to say like, okay, are you actually prepared for this? Like, are you actually ready to do this? And so there's a process that you have to go through yourself and it's, it like can smack you in the face a little bit. Like we're not here to sugarcoat shit. Like that's not why we're here either because it is a process and it's a process that you have to honor for yourself. And that goes for self-care. That goes for learning like, know, and trust. That goes for showing up on live videos and just showing up as you. Because if you can't, like that's also embodying for how much you love yourself. Like, and even if we're being super honest, we were both nervous for this because we're human. Like we feel. Oh, yeah, this is very uncomfortable. 
<laughs> but I look at like if we don't show up and show up here on this platform, like what are we teaching? We're also moving through our own fears, which is what we're trying to embody and teach women to do. So like you can walk through your fears. You don't also have to walk through your fears alone. Like this is not a place where you have to walk through these things alone. Like I now have this amazing woman with me that like helps me coach. I coach myself through things with her. I just have to call her and I'm like, blah, blah, blah. I, figured, I figured it out. Just kidding. Bye. <laughs> but like she can do that to me and we can be real and honest and like, I am so grateful when she told me, like, I got worked up on one day and I wasn't feeling good. And I was like, I have to just go, 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 go. And she gave me permission to just stop and to just, like, <laughs> take a break. And I was like, oh, how did you know this? She's like, dude, because I'm like you. I'm like, oh, this, this makes sense. So, but, like, having that other person that can give you permission to just chill out, sometimes you need. Like, I'm extremely, I know I'm accountability. I need accountability in my life. Um, I'm definitely a person who shows up a thousand times stronger when I have to be accountable for somebody else because it pushes me even more to be accountable for me. Absolutely. <laughs> My <Mic> job. <laughs> Dude, actually, and on that topic, because we do have moms on here, I want to talk about the, the sign I knew that you were secretly dying. When you said... I'm not feeling well, but I'm just going to push, like, I'm going to drink this coffee and I'm going to push through. If you're saying that, take the day off, mom. Like, just take the day off, mama, and be a human. Yep. For the I'm so guilty about that. I'm like, caffeine will fix it. And then I'm like, oh, my God, now I'm dehydrated <laughs> and I'm over the giant and I feel like shit. <laughs> yeah. But, like, having, like... I, you know, I went through businesses and trying to figure out my life and I was like trying to find like that person who could just get me and I was struggling. But this literally, when I decided that I was going to work and I was going to figure out who my ideal client was, how to attract these people, how to really like launch myself and get out of my comfort zone. This person was there. And that's the beauty of like going into something you feel called to do and trusting yourself and applying those self-care pieces because like you can create friendships like this. You can create a beautiful relationship with yourself. Um, you can create beautiful relationships with other people and you can and embody these things and teach these things because um, I've always been the person who um, like, I guess like, let's go way back here. <laughs> <laughs> like in high school, people used to call me this floater because I never just sat in one area because I always was curious about everybody. And I, I wasn't a drama person. I, well, I love drama guys. I love being in the, in the class drama, but not like drama. And so I always like push those things away because it wasn't something that I wanted in my life. And, um, you know, ever since then, like this person that kept going around and had a group of people because she didn't just stick with one person, like I have a personality where I can talk to a ton of people, but I also have the closest people in my life that I like value. They're on the top of my list, like all the people that I care about. And so like, it's important that you know yourself, like in these, all these pieces will blow your mind when you actually sit down and figure out like how she was saying about niching down, like what are her pain points? What are you trying to move her through? Um, what is she feeling? Because what she's feeling is what you felt like a hundred percent. That's the, when she, when Stasi was talking about the woman that you are like involving and like, I talked about that too. Um, it's really true. Like the, it comes out where you, you really like let a lot of things out and, but it's also a beautiful space because it teaches you to be just like a hundred percent yourself. And it was a long time before I felt um, truly myself. Cause I felt like I had to like do whatever my network marketing company was telling me to do or show up a certain way that somebody else was because they had X amount of followers. Well, that does not, um, like what's the word I'm looking for? That does not, that does not speak your success. That's somebody else's success. So you have to always work at your own, but like, see, I can just talk for her. <laughs> I love to listen to you talk, but I just, I just want to add, I just feel like it's also remembering that it's like, like zoom out. This is a, like, like you've been saying, like it's, it's a process. So it's like a choice every single day. So give yourself, some some time because there's no like destination just every single day you're gonna feel a little bit better and a little bit more like you and a little bit lighter than the day before it's not necessarily about like waking up and being like oh you know what I'm the greatest mom I've ever been you know like just overnight it's about like going you know what 
I was a pretty great mom today. And the next day being like, you know what? I killed it again. And the next day choosing to be the mom that you want to be. So at the end of the day, you're like, yes, this is my shit during that time. Go me. <laughs> yes. 100%. All right, look. Pillar three. I'm getting all hyped now. Are we ready? I'm in. Ready for it? <laughs> Kara excited. <laughs> um, okay, so the third pillar that I believe is just like another one of those solid foundations, which will also trickle into your like, know, and trust, which will also trickle into your niche. It'll trickle into self care. And that is having solid boundaries and values. Mm-hmm. Now, people. You know, even before when I had to sit down and figure out what were my boundaries and what were my values, I was stumped. I was like, ah, uh, like I, I value friends. <laughs> I value family. I really didn't. Like, I didn't go deeper because your values also um, don't write it out, but they also, you can figure out where your boundaries start start coming into play or why people, uh, why you react a certain way you do with other people because of a boundary and a value. So I just want to give people like a little bit of a definition of what a boundary is. So a boundary marks a limit of an area. So it's just like, if something bothers you, okay, that is the limit that you have. Now you have to figure out why and what value that is pushed. Then a value, so a value is a person's principle or standard of behavior of one's judgment of what is important in life. So this is what is important in your life, not to anybody else's life. This is yours because everybody's boundaries and values are also different. And that is a hundred percent. Okay. Because you are a unique human being and nobody is like you hundred percent. Nobody is like you. Um, even if you're a twin, you still have different DNA. It's very similar, but different DNA. Like you're still a unique human being and you need to remember that. And so if your values look different than even your spouse's values, that's okay. Because, like, you're a different person. Like, so I just want to talk about, um, I'm going to go deeper into that, and then I'm going to talk about the signs of a healthy boundaries and sounds like, and then what it looks like to have a lack of them as well. Um, because this is also going to tie into having tough conversations with people and uncomfortability because um, you can't stay comfortable. And I honestly, because of what I'm teaching and what, I, what I'm going through, I go through these things in my life. And I'll actually talk about another scenario here in a little bit, but um, do, I guess the biggest thing here is like, do you actually know what your boundaries and values are? Do you know what a value is? Like, do you know what your values are? Like, I can tell you what I value and I know, and this is just because who I am right now, I value money. Now, some people might say, what, you value money first? Money is a top of my freaking list because money I allowed to control my life for so freaking long that I finally put a stop to that. And I've like worked my butt off to get that to stop. But that is something I value and I know I value, but now I have placed some very healthy boundaries, which we'll talk about in regards to money because I took money off of a freaking pedestal. And that's a big thing that people um, kind of forget is that they put money way out here and they put themselves down here. And no, no, you gotta switch that. So I value money and then I value respect. Now, in regards to respect, I, we try to instill the best we can in our children to respect their elders, to respect their friends, um, even those who are younger than them, because um, respect is huge. You know, if you give it, you hope to receive it. Now, you're not always gonna receive it, and that's just the way life is. Um, but when you're giving things, like, I know that I, my, to my best ability, I respect all those that are around me, even though even people who have upset me, hurt me, done these things, because I believe in giving people chances, and I believe that people make mistakes, and I don't want to be judged for mine, so I know that I value respect, and that, um, but I have now had to place some very healthy boundaries as well in regards to respect, and how much I can be disrespected, and when I speak up, when I don't, like, those kinds of things, which everybody else is different. Um, you know, actually recently, a lot of people have called me intimidating. I am like working through this because everybody who calls me intimidating is not trying to say it in like a negative way, but there's a negative connotation with the word intimidating. And when they call me intimidating, they say like, no, I believe you're intimidating because like you are so firm in your values and boundaries. Like, you know what the hell you want in life. You know where you want to go that like, 
nobody can even question that. Like, no one could look at you and be like, are you sure? You're like, no, no, I got it. Like, I'm good. And it's not that I have a wall, but I just know the woman I am. I know who I want to embody. And so I've made sure that I know who I am. Like, what pisses me off? What makes me really freaking happy? I know this. And so, like, I know my limit. Um, and then communication. Um, I, I really value communicating. Um, you know, if you can't communicate how you feel, what's going on in your life, you can't be like super honest, like those communication is so huge in all areas of your life with your children, with like, if you have split parenting, um, if you're a parent, if you're in, like, if you have a, a job, like if you're coming up, like if you're in a coaching business, communication, like, come on guys, <laughs> communication is huge. And then family, like I value family, <clears throat> which may seem further down on my list, but I value family above, um, like friends, those kinds of things. Um, friends aren't actually even on my value list, even though I value them, but my top five, um, my last one, honesty. I, I am a very, like people may think I'm intimidating as they call it. Um, I'm very much of a person that if you genuinely make a mistake, own up to it. Because if you sit there and you try to like lie or make these circles, it just gets bigger and then it gets bigger. And then it's this big energy of like negativity and just being honest. Okay, you messed up. Let's move forward. I'm very much of a person. So I've had a lot of people lie to me over and over again. And I'm like, you know, if you were just honest, I would have just said, okay, like, I don't, I don't appreciate that. But like, let's move forward now. So I value honesty. And so now I want to talk about boundaries. So I'm going to give you guys a story about, um, you know, I have skilled parenting. Like I have, I'm a stepmom. And so as a, I'm a stepmom and I'm, and I'm a mom. Like I carried a child and I didn't put it to others. And it can be really hard <clears throat> being a stepmother, um, but it also can be very rewarding because you don't just deal with what you believe to be true, but you also deal with um, other parents too and what they, they value or what they're teaching on the weeks that the kids aren't here. And so, you know, there was a time where like we weren't communicating. There was a time where things were really rough, really hard and really sensitive to people where they didn't really know where they stood. And I always gave this individual the benefit of the doubt because, um, I believe people deserve that. And so it came to a point where um, we had a lot of problems and I nipped it in the back because I was like, this can't go on like this anymore. And I literally had a movie moment because I'm in this whole phase of trusting myself and trusting my gut where I showed up at her house. And I talked with her because I felt that that was extremely important to just stop it there and to be face to face and hiding behind a TV, like not a TV, sorry, a computer or like a, some sort of social media device, like a cell phone. Um, communication I valued, but I valued that face to face like conversation. And, and I also value communication. Oh, key, there you go. So like I stepped out of my comfort zone and I figured out that like, I had to place a boundary and there was a boundary that we both were crossing and we needed to talk these things through and go through these, these things. And like, this is all possible. And maybe there's a person in your life that you'll meet that is not open to that. That's their choice. And you have to move through that. Like if you know that you genuinely are open to moving through those things, great. But that's just one, like I could dive much deeper, but it's, it's more of a personal story. And, but there was like for split parents, it's hard and there's a lot of things that you won't agree on, but there's a lot of things you do. And the one thing that you mainly agree on is that you want to love the hell out of those children. You want to provide them with the best possibility. And so we agree on those things. And so despite the things that we don't agree on, like we've agreed to disagree and move forward because we're two different people. people. Two different people, two different values, two different boundaries. That's okay. But we talked about it. Communication. And you don't have to argue about things like just because you feel strongly about something, whether it's religion, whether it's sex, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your kids, um, you can feel a certain way, but somebody else is sure allowed to feel the way that they feel like feelings are not to be brushed away at all. That's also like more, but, um, also I guess in regards to like parenting too, cause this is all for moms. Um, I had a lot cause like I have. I have split parents as well, so I don't have just one dad. I have two, but now I'm married, so I have three. I have three moms. Like, there's a lot of love there. And so, but there's also a lot of um, opinions, and they want to weigh in on my parenting and how we parent and what we do and what we don't do. And so I was feeling like I had to impress everybody. And this was just – I was just, like, dying inside. I was overwhelmed. I didn't know – who to please, what to say, what not to say. And then my kids were getting confused until one day I'm like, okay, um, 
these are my kids, these are my children, and what I believe to be true for them, I'm going to teach them. You can tell me how you might feel about something, but at the end of the day, you do not get to tell me how to parent my kids. I get to parent, and I get to choose. And so this is also like putting that responsibility back on you, but it is so important to have hard conversations. It is so important to get out of your comfort zone and talk about those things. Like even with your, your spouse or whoever you're in a relationship with, if something is lacking in those areas, like your sex life is not thriving. If your communication is off, if like there's just something that's off, talk about it. Like there's a point where you can talk to listen or talk to just like butt heads. And I've had to learn myself that I have to also, I can talk, but I also need to listen. And I also need to take a step back. And I've learned those through knowing what my values are and what my boundaries are. And that takes time. Um, it didn't happen overnight that I figured out how to have these hard conversations. Um, it took weeks sometimes of getting the guts uh, or the courage. I'd like to call it courage actually to get up and have these conversations. But man, have they changed my life because now my parents changed from being more, um, like their negative opinion towards what we were doing into a positive one because I took that control back. Like I took that parenting handle back where I was like, no, this is, this is my choice. And same with like split parenting. Um, you can agree to disagree and you can still parent so well together and have such a great relationship with those kids. If you have those tough conversations away from your children, because children's little ears don't need to hear those things. Um, and even with your, your spouse, like I know, Actually, my coach told me one day, she's like, you realize that people aren't mind readers, right? So, like, if you're out there saying, like, this is a, <clears throat> an example my mom gave me about going, like, stopping when you're on a drive, and you're like, hey, babe, you want a coffee? And then they say no, and you're like, oh, okay. But deep down, you really wanted a coffee, and then you get really angry because they didn't stop for freaking coffee. Well, how would you just say, hey, babe, I want a coffee, and we're going to stop. Would you like one? <laughs> Just be clear. It's the same with talking about sex. Um, I wanted more sex in my relationship. I wanted more sex with my husband, and I wanted to connect on a deeper level. Um, that conversation was not awkward because I, I'm married to the man, and he was like, ah, uh, yeah, like totally on board. Sure. But, right? But you have to be able to have these conversations to get somewhere. And, like, to talk about your uncomfortability. If you're uncomfortable, like, there was a space where I was just, like, I don't know. I was so close and I couldn't figure out why, where I had to journal and I had to figure those things out and I had to figure out why I was feeling so off and so disconnected um, and that it wasn't his fault. Like, and if somebody, like if you show up for somebody, like, so I know that I will always show up my best that I can for people, always give them the benefit of the doubt. I can't expect them to do that. If I, like, I can't put my expectations of myself on other people because that's not fair. Like, when my husband was going through something and I was supporting him, I was, like, I was bitter at one point. Like, this was years ago. And I got really bitter and really mad. And I was always, like, why aren't you showing up this way for me? Why aren't you doing this for me? Why aren't you doing that? And I was nitpicking everything he was doing. Or, like, he had, there was no reason why I needed to expect him to do exactly what I did. Like, that's just, that's, just, no. <laughs> He's not a mind reader. He's not me. And I can't put those expectations on other people. What you expect for you is what you expect. You can, you can like, you can expect things, but like you can't expect perfection out of people. And if you're not willing to say what you feel about it, if you're not willing to speak up about what makes you happy, what doesn't, um, if you're not willing to have uncomfortable conversations because you're scared of losing people, well, I know that the people who are meant to be in my life will honor those things as well. They'll respect them or if they have like, you know, viewpoints that are, that are different from mine, we'll still talk about them. I'm not going to argue about, like, different views of people. I'm like, it's, not, it's really not that important. But I know that I show up better when I know myself, when I have solid boundaries, where I have these tough conversations, where I don't just put my family first. Like, how I've changed my views with money, how I've changed the way I communicate with people, how I've shown up the, the confident woman I want to embody that I'm now showing up in this person that people are like, whoa. This girl knows what she wants. This girl like knows where she's going in life. And that takes time. Like I kind of went on a tangent here. So I really hope this all made sense. But like when you can figure out and sit down and like really solidify a list, like I say, like figure out your five top values and then figure out your boundaries. Now, if you have to write a list of 20 values that you have, and then you'll know what your five are, you'll know they'll stick like sore thumbs. And then you can figure out what your boundaries are. So like if you're, if you're going through your day and somebody like accountability is one for me, like if somebody tells me they're going to show up at like 6 p.m., which is why 
Zoom little, irked me a little bit when it wasn't working, but I'm like, I can't control it. But like, because I'm a woman of my word, when I want to show up at this time, I'm going to show up. And so um, when people tell me that they're going to be there, and then I just expect people to, to, to be, um, to honor their words, I guess, to show up with, with, um, with how they, if they say they're going to be somewhere to let me know if they're not like, just about being honest, if you can't be there, it's okay. But like show up with a woman of your word. Um, your clients will thank you for it. Your spouse will thank you for it. Um, your friends will thank you for it. The people who are around you that care about you are going to thank you for who you are. I have, um, you know, a very close circle of close friends that I've known for years and my goodness, do I know these women and I know when they shift and I know when they're going through changes and I know when they're feeling things because I know where they're like, if they're, even if their boundaries are off or they're allowing someone to like really take something away from them, I can feel it for them and I can talk about it with them because I know them so well. So when you get to know yourself so well, you have the ability to talk to other people through their boundaries and values and to figure out why something pisses them off, why something makes them extremely happy, why something just like is not flowing the way they want to flow. Um, you got to figure out you, <laughs> you got to figure out what makes you, you and boundaries and values are a big one. And people really just like allow people to, um, not just tear them down, but just like take and take and take from them that they forget that they can place these healthy boundaries and values. And like, before I move on to stuff, is I want to talk about, um, so a lack of yourself. So this is where it ties into self care. You're not going to feel like yourself. You're going to feel like you're showing up like somebody else and it's going to show up in your identity and it's going to show up in your lifestyle. And then you're going to wake up one day and be like, what is going on with my life? Like, where am I? What am I doing? Um, you're going to spend time with the wrong people because you haven't put up a good wall about who you want to be around and who you don't want to be around. Um, you're going to be, you're going to, you're going to notice that you have uncomfortable behaviors of your own. Um, you know, I had to work through yelling. I, when I was a kid, my dad yelled at me. And so I just like took on this like huge masculine energy and I just thought yelling would solve everything. I had to work through that. And so I took on somebody else's uncomfortable behavior because I thought it was okay. And it wasn't okay. And it didn't feel good to me. Every time I did it, I felt like a crappy person because it wasn't me. And then you'll avoid doing things with other people because like, if you don't have boundaries and you don't show up how you want to show up, you're not going to. So then you're going to start feeling shitty. And then, um, cool. This too. The, so lack of boundaries. So you're going to have, you know how you talk about having your cake and eating it too. So you're going to have the freedom without responsibility where, like literally you are like eating five cakes <laughs> and like taking from everybody else and not just like having your cake and eating it too. You're taking from everybody else because you don't know who you are. And like, you're going to start controlling people, manipulation. Like those are all signs of a lack of boundary or value and like having healthy one. Yeah. I've got a good one. You go ahead. Go. You start eating everybody's cake because you don't know when you're full right? Yes, I love it. Um, and then saying no without guilt. So this is a sign of a healthy boundary. Now, this is why I talk to mothers who feel mom guilt and don't know how to say no and don't know how to say yes. So when you're saying no without guilt, that's a sign of a healthy boundary. That's you knowing who you are. Um, when you're asking for what you want or need. So also you could talk about it how when you, like you desire thing that's a different way of, of putting it out to the universe too um and then taking care of yourself see self-care <laughs> and saying yes because you want to not because you feel you have to um there's two different things like that's also like showing up as the boss that you are um you can show up when you want to really you're the boss so when everybody gets so worked up like we're like, we know that this we sh we're we're providing this content so like we know that like we're showing up because we want to be here. And this is a yes that we said because we didn't feel obligated. We wanted to do this. This is something we wanted to provide. And so you'll feel safe in your emotions. You'll feel safe in the words that you're saying. You'll feel like these gut nudges telling you to like do something because it's what you really want to do. You'll start listening to yourself. You start listening to your, your mind, your body, your soul. Um, there's so many things. You'll be in tune with your own feelings. Like you'll know who you are 
to like a freaking T. So when somebody sees that something is wrong, you'll be able to answer it. It won't be like, well, I don't know. This is, it's because this person made me do this. Nobody makes you do shit. <laughs> you do it. Like, it is you, yourself, and that's it. And so you have full control on your figuring out your values, figuring out your boundaries, providing yourself with self-care, lifting yourself the brick up because you deserve to be put on. Um, you deserve to put yourself on a pedestal so that you can show up the, like the woman, the mother that you want to be because I knew that I didn't want to just be a mom. And some people like, and I don't, I don't mean to offend anybody when I say that, but I didn't want to just be a mom. I didn't want people to look at me and be like, oh, there's care of the mom. <laughs> I wanted to be a woman that, and a mother that women talked about because she carried such confidence and grace behind her and integrity and like ambition behind her to follow her dreams and to talk about them and to help other women do the same. So I can continue talking about so I think I just talked for like 20 minutes there. So... <laughs> I but boundaries forever. and values are extremely important. Pardon me? I could listen to you forever. I'm always, I'm just like, damn, dude, this is my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it is, it is so important that you figure those out and that you really sit down and when it, if it takes you a day, if it takes you a week, that's okay. But to find out who you are and to like strip all those other limiting beliefs that like, it's just so important to know who you are. It's so important to, like, narrow that person down and really believe in the woman that you are because um, she's there and she wants to be there. And so I pushed her down for way too long until I decided that that was just not, wasn't me anymore. So it's if you can change that. You can choose. <laughs> yeah, you can choose to, to be the woman that you want others to see you as. Mm -hmm. To be like that like that, that voice that you just feel is you because all of the crap on top of it and all of the mean things you say to yourself and about other people, like that's not even your voice. So it's really just about being able to like peel it all back, really. Yes. So I just want to like, just because you brought it up, you were like, oh, I never just wanted to be a mom to be a mom. But I, I did, right? And I've actually been thinking about this. I love that you brought this up. It's not because, like, like, there's never been a point where there was, like, a shift and I'm like, oh, I don't want to be a mom. But I had this shift the other day where I was like, I wanted to be a mom because I didn't think I was anything else at one point. You know what I mean? And I just, it was this really that lack of clarity and the lack of boundaries and the lack of values. It was just the lack of, like, any sense of self. So if, you know... If you feel that way, like there's not, even, there's nothing wrong with feeling like that, but there's nothing wrong with giving yourself permission. Like right now, like if you need like a moment, like there it is, that snap, let it go and start moving towards clarity. Like sit down with this. Like the last thing I want is for somebody to watch this whole training and not go write anything down or to use the workbook. Like you have to do the work and you have yeah. to gain the clarity and you have to do the things. Cause if not, how are you going to get in her head? Right? Like, so yep. that's, I just wanted to add that in because I just, I feel like it's so important. I don't know how many trainings I've done where I'm like, yes, I get this. I'm hyped. This all makes sense. And then I don't do any of the work. And then I'm yeah. like, I'm faced with something later on, like, like, maybe somebody will watch this, and later on, they'll be like, oh, my God, I just don't know what to do with my business. And it's going to be like, live video. And you're like, uh, I just, I still don't know what to do in like, my video. And you're going to ignore it because you didn't go do the work to get to the space of, like, well, yeah, I can show up live because I know who I am, and I can show up authentically. So make sure, guys, you answer the questions. You write down your, you said almost like a list side by side. Your boundaries and values are two separate lists. Um, no, you can write a list. You can write two separate lists, like whatever really floats your boat. But having a list of your values and then putting a boundary beside it, because there are things like in regards to money that there is boundaries people have with money. Um, there is like, there's other values that people tie in with money too. Like there's a lot of things that can be tied together. So I really found benefit for myself having those lists side by side. But other people might like looking at two separate pieces of paper. That's totally okay. But either way, we talk about like everything we're talking about 
we also talk about how it took us work, how it took us time, how we put in self-care every day, how we journaled every day, how we showed up every day. Like this requires, like listening to this, this video, like we love that you're listening to this video, but unless you put the work for yourself, you won't see change because you'll be the exact same spot that you were and that spot may be fantastic and I'm so happy for you if that's where you are but a lot of people who are watching these things are craving to attract their clients well that takes work it doesn't just come like this maybe magically you might think it did this for somebody else that's not the case they still work they still got themselves there they still built up their clientele they still built up their life and so you have to do that for you. Like you have to show up, you have to put in some work and the work doesn't have to be like, it's not supposed to be like draining and like just horrible. It's supposed to be positive. And there was days where I had to step aside from it. And I'm sure Stasia could probably agree there where I had to step aside and give myself time to like process and let it go because there is going to be a whole process of like, letting go of certain things and really like being truly honest with yourself about where you see your life and where you want to go. Like, I don't know. I, it took me a while to, to, cause there was friendships that I have that I had that I don't have anymore. Um, because they, it just was not right anymore. It didn't feel okay anymore. And as much as I love these people, it just wasn't, it wasn't where I wanted to take my life anymore. That, that wasn't where I was going. So there's a lot of like really self-reflection that comes down to here, you guys. And we talk about this so confidently and like through our soul, like through and through because we embody these things and we believe these things to be true because they have been true for us through work, through, you know, doing workbooks, through um, like whatever it is, if it's personal development, whether it's hiring yourself a coach, whether it's like whatever that looks like to you, there was still work. There were still questions that needed to be answered and it was still things that we pushed aside that really had to, they kind of had to like rear their ugly faces and it can be really hard to have self-reflection and we also honor that and we also honor that it's a process, but it's a process that um, you should give your permission, yourself permission to go through because you will thank yourself for it later. Absolutely, dude. Yeah. I feel like we could do this all night. I could. I know. I know. I'm just like, how long am I talking? I'm not even like looking at the time. I'm like, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> it, it's like, it's almost like 830. So we're like, like, we're making really, really good time, I think. Yeah, we are. We're good. Because we started a little bit later. So it's all good. Yeah. Like, I know that we have two hours on here. So like. <laughs> yeah, no, we're amazing. But on this topic, because you were talking about like letting go of people that just really didn't make you feel good. Like, let's move into, like, our fourth pillar of, like, auditing your inner circle, right? This is so important, and I don't even mean, guys, just the people you're hanging out with, right? Because we have the internet now, so who are you, like, when you're scrolling on Facebook, what are you stopping on? Because I had this realization the other day. There would be times I would scroll by a business coach talking about a training that would have benefited me. And I'll stop on like tasty, like on food, and I'll watch that. Like, what are you consuming, right? So, the first thing I want to say about like auditing your circle, especially as an online entrepreneur, is the first like is I, I just go clean up your timeline, like go clean up your newsfeed, go the people that are bringing you down, and when you see their posts, you're like, oh, that sucks again. And they make you feel bad. And the people that are like, oh, happy people are annoying. Go get rid of them. Just get that energy off your feet. Those aren't your soulmate clients. They're not. And they're like, it doesn't feel like it, but they, they stay stuck in your head, or at least for me. And then like the very back of my mind, when I'm creating content, I almost like, I feel bad that they're unhappy. So I almost like a little gear it towards them. And that does not serve you or them because they're like, they're in their own space and their own season, and it's not going to resonate with them. They're not where you are. They're in a different season, right? So go get rid of them. Just go get rid of them. If you have to, this is what I did. I was like, it's nothing personal, and I would unfriend them. And, like, especially people I didn't really want to, like, oh, my God, what if they know I unfollowed them? I would say out loud, it's nothing personal. It's not. Your social media as an online business owner is your 
business. You wouldn't let your friend come loiter if they were bugging the shit out of your customers and killing your vibe and your customer's vibe. You would be like, hey, buddy, do you think that, you know, you could not do that here? We don't do that here. Do you think you could, you know, you wouldn't just let them stay. So go clean up your new feed, right? What, and be honest with yourself. If you're like, you know what? I really have been scrolling by every single coach's video, but I can make time to watch some funny cat vines. Be honest with yourself and then hide a couple cat vines, right? Because so often we're just like operating on autopilot almost. We're not catching ourselves, especially when we're scrolling, like when we're not acting like the person we want to be, right? Sometimes it takes you a second to go, oh, I've been scrolling for 20 minutes and my, my kid has been asking me for water. Like, or I know, I know I do anyway. And we get sucked into it. So make sure whatever you're consuming and you're almost like, I don't want to say mindlessly consuming, but it's really easy when you're just scrolling. Make sure you've cleaned it up and it's people that are at least going to make you go, oh yeah, I have a business. That's what this for. Badass business babe just popped up and I remembered I'm bullshitting. So I'm going to put my phone down now and I'm going to go work on my behind the scenes thing. It's about little things like that, right? This is what I mean by like auditing your inner circle. And like we have the internet. So guys, Kara's in Canada, but I'm like, like my focus is on like talking to her like every single day. There are people I work with that I like and I enjoy being around. But I'm like, like, they're not where I want to be. They're not the energy I want to be. So I'm putting my energy over here because like, no matter, I feel like this was so hard for me to admit, but like, no matter what you're imitating somebody, essentially, we are just the people we're around. Yes. So give yourself permission to imitate the people you want to be and to pick up their habits and to pick up their things. Because no matter what you're picking, like you're picking stuff up anyway. So really like assess where you are. Who am I talking to? Is my upline positive? Is my upline where I want to be? Yes. Great. Keeps consuming it. No. Okay. There are more coaches and more uplines in your industry. There is YouTube. There is Instagram. There are other ways for you to get to where you want to be. So if anything feels icky to you, if any person is giving you this icky, nasty vibe, let it be light. If you want to be light, you have to let go, right? It nope. doesn't always mean like, I don't want you to be my upline anymore. Sometimes it just means spending less time watching their videos and more time watching somebody else's. Maybe it means investing in a program. Maybe it means joining a mastermind or finding a coach. But whatever it is, it doesn't have to be what you're doing now if what you're doing now doesn't feel good, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Oh, dude, my stomach hurts. I'm like nervous. I'm, like so excited. I'm like, ah. but it's so. true to be honest about like, um, that comparison too. Like if you find yourself constantly comparing yourself to people, um, that's we're human. Okay. First we do that and forgive yourself for doing it because you probably will do it again at some point in your life, but knowing it and being aware of it is the first step. And, like, I was comparing myself before to people who were, like, showing up on live videos because I thought they were so confident. When then I would talk to them later, they'd be like, dude, I was shitting my pants. Like, I was so nervous. And they're just as human as I am. And so um, I know that I'm not that person. So I'm going to show up being me and how, the, how I show up on my videos. And I've had to, to teach myself to be comfortable with that and to stop looking at other people and think that I have to be that person because I'm not, I am me. And so we also want you to honor that. Yes. Yes. Always like, like follow that intuitive little feeling. Like, you know how somebody makes you feel not like as soon as you meet them, but quickly honor that trust it if somebody gives you a weird vibe then just I mean you don't have to be ugly to anybody ever but like only pursue the people that make your that amplify your energy right like your good energy because no matter what no matter who you're around they're amplifying something in you so make sure it's what you want to bring out right yep um so be celebrated and really the last point I have here 
is bubble up. What color is your bubble, dude? Mine? It is like a pretty blue. I wish you could see my diffuser right now because it literally is like beautiful, like actually it would be like a bluey lavender, like a mixture between that because that is what I am and it's filled with glitter. I love that, dude. <laughs> Mine is a gold glitter bubble, right? And this is super relevant, guys, because you're going to pick a color right now, right? If this is the only thing you write down, write down your color right now, add glitter to it and bubble up. You are now inside of a huge glitter bubble. And it differs for everybody. My coach said it's four feet all the way around. I like to make it a little smaller for some reason, maybe because I'm super short and I just feel like it needs to be a smaller bubble so I'm more protected by people's BS. It's not spread so thin, right? And when these people that just don't amplify your good energy come near you and they, so a good example for me, I'm a, I'm a server, right? So sometimes I'm around people that don't have the best money mindset and they'll be like, I can't believe I only made, you know, a $10 tip, for example. And I think that's a kind tip, but sometimes depending on the check and the percentages, some people's perspective is different. And when people are like, I can't believe I only made it, I'm like, boop, get out of here. Boop, 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 like just boop it off. <laughs> let it go let it let it just disintegrate into the bullshit that it is and keep just keep hanging out in your bubble keep getting around people that make you explode in the litter because it fills the pinpricks from the boops yeah and just keep your like and just know that you can audit your inner circle at any time like it doesn't have to be heavy you are allowed to step back and look at it at any point and go, it doesn't feel as good as it used to. This feels really good. I'm going to give this more energy. And it won't, like, it just has to be that easy. I think so often we're like, oh my God, I've got to end this relationship. But you don't. You just have to spend less time there. Yes. So I will give you guys back to Kara because that's it. Bubble up. Bubble <laughs> up. Bubble up. Bubble up. <laughs> bubble. It's on. <laughs> Um, I love what you have to say about, um, you know, your innermost circle. I firmly believe that that's why I have, um, you know, like a good five people that I'm extremely close with and a lot of other people that, you know, I have friendships with, but I deem more as like acquaintances and, and uh, that's okay. And like she said too, of like, um, there's certain se people have seasons in your life. And if you're listening to this, you probably have been like, you know, I used to have a best friend or like, I used to have this friend that I was really close with. And now they don't fit that season or they didn't fit where you were going. And maybe that was, there was a good break. Maybe there was a bad break. Um, but you're allowed to, uh, to break things off. You're allowed to have friend breakups. You're allowed to, um, you know, protect your energy, protect that bubble that you have. And that all, you know, as we're, we're going to like close up this, this video here um, because we talked so much and I love it. <laughs> we, um, you know, we talked about self care and in regards to your self care, like you do have to put that up bubble around you. You do have to build it up. You do have to do what Stasi said and going boop, 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 and not allowing those people to penetrate you because the more you say um, like, yes, when you don't want to, that's someone poking it and then you're letting out your energy and that's, you're not, you're not keeping that safe. And so like, say someone does something that really makes you mad and you just don't do anything about it. Well, that's another poke. And then if you start looking at your life and how many things are actually taking away your energy, you need to steal that back up. And that takes a lot of reflection, a lot of time of looking in and looking at you. And, um, you know, I was scared to do this before. Um, and I'm sure that people who will see this video in like now or in the future, um, you may feel the same or you just might not be ready to, 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 to really look at yourself and to look at the things that are in your life. And, um, but honor that, but also honor yourself. Like if it doesn't feel like you're ready for it, you probably are ready for it. You're just scared because there's going to be some tough decisions that you have to make. And I've had to make a lot of tough decisions in my life and I'm sure Stassi has had to do the same thing, but the tough decisions I'm grateful for. Like, I'm grateful for where I am in my life now. I was grateful for where I was before. There's no anger to where I was. Um, all situations I've learned something from. Like, I believe everything happened for a reason. 
Um, I don't believe in coincidence. I believe that it is what is meant for you will happen and will um, curate itself. And what you tell yourself will also magically happen too. So, um, you know, a self-care piece, um, showing up and like you're like no one trust and, you know, being authentically you takes self-care takes also your, your boundaries and values. It also takes knowing the people that you're around and honoring those people and knowing where you want to go and being around people who want to see you go there, who like support the shit out of you and like are like, yes, this woman, like I'm so grateful that the friends that I have when I chose to step into the coaching business were like, this is you. Like this is so you. They were like loving everything. They wanted to know all the information. And I was so blessed that I had people like that in my life. And that's also why I am friends with Stasia because she is on a similar mission. Yes, we're two different people, so it's two different missions, but we're very similar. Um, freakishly similar, actually, <laughs> in some ways. Um, that is, but it's important to know those people and to to know yourself, to attract the people that you want in your life. So that's all I have. And I hope that whatever the information that we have given you tonight, that you do put in some work for yourself, that you do sit down and uh, you like write down your values and boundaries. You go through the workbook and you, you really have some self-reflection. That's what I hope. It's your turn. <laughs> My hope is that you take what you can and you leave the rest. And if nothing else, you realize that I think it's been an hour and a half. You just showed up for yourself for that long, right? So you made the choice and you made the decision. And if you can do it today, you can do it again tomorrow and you can do it again the next day and the next day and the next day. It's just making that choice and being aware of like where you're at, where you want to be. The only thing is like, you just have to know where you want to be and the price you're willing to pay to get there. Like yep. the rest falls underneath it. So come hang with us in our communities. You can find me at the Multi-Level Marketing Mama on Facebook. And you can find me at Ambitious Mom Balancing Business and Babies. And dude, I just think like I, I love you, Kara, for doing this with me. And I just thank everybody else like so much for being here. I also love you, by the way, very much. And this is not the first time that people, this won't be the last time, sorry, that people will uh, see us do something like this together because we have so much, <laughs> so much to talk about. Like we just talked for an hour and a half um, and Bye. we continue. So you will see more of us and, you know, like honor the friendships you have, honor yourself and like these beautiful things will, will curate themselves in your life because they're meant to be. And I, I manifested this amazing person in my life who lifts me up and, you know, believes so powerfully in the things that I believe in myself. And even though we are different, but also similar, um, I honor her for like where she is in her space and we give each other space to be these people and to grow and to shift and be that person that just like, is like, no, maybe you do need to push a little bit. Like, what are you worried about? Like, it's, it's important that you have those people in your life. And, and so I hope you do. And if you don't, I hope you find them. Truly, truly, because, you know, we should have made it like the five foundational pillars and talked about like having that accountability and that almost like soundboard. You know I think what I we mean? kind of like got that through this though too, because right. like, even though we have four foundational pillars and they all come together, um, there's a lot of things that embody those four pillars. So, and having those solid relationships in regards to what you're talking about, about your innermost circle, you're a part of my innermost circle. You're your own pillar. I love you. No, I'm just kidding. Yes. <laughs> there's a bonus pillar, you guys. It's having a bestie, a business yes. bestie. Go find one. <laughs> have fun that you can have dance for party. them. They're there. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Well, you know, anything else you want to add? No, this mocha was amazing. This was fun. And, oh, if you're working on your workbook and you get stuck somewhere, come, come ask questions in one of the two communities or both, whatever you feel called to. If you get stuck, we're coaches and we're here to help you. And this is why we made the the webinar. This is why we created the workbook. So if you, if you get stuck and you're not really sure how to answer something, come ask. We are super, super happy to help. Super 100%. Happy. Yep. 
that's it. That's all I'm getting. All right. Well, on that note, I I am going to uh, you know hang out with my husband now. <laughs> Same, I think my babies are home, so have the best night, beautiful. Thank yeah. you else for tuning in. Happy, have a great day, have a great evening, have a great night. <laughs> yeah, have a great everything. <laughs> right? That's so funny. And you're the host, so you close it? Yes, yes? Yes, I will, because I have to. All right. Bye, everyone.